Hey guys, I'm Adam Haig from 3D Games and in this video I'll show you how to make a gorgeous looking veggie patch for your tabletop wargaming terrain using simple materials. Stick around to the end of the video to see the finished product. I'm making my garden to be used in the Farmer Maggot's crop scenario from the Quest of the Ring Bearer book for MESBG. In this scenario the layout calls for a fenced field measuring 6 by 4 inches so that is the size I used. After cutting a thin sheet of MDF to size, I used a retractable blade to shave the edges and round the corners. This was then sanded to create a nice smooth rounded finish. To create the furrows I used polyfiller. This was spread thinly across the base which had been painted with PVA for extra adhesion. I then used a bread knife to carve the furrow texture to create the look of fresh tilled earth. Once the filler was dry I used PVA mixed with paint. Initially I went with burnt sienna but didn't like how reddish it was so mixed in raw umber. This was applied all over the surface of the base. I then sprinkled a mix of soil and tile grout to create a realistic looking earthy ground cover. Usually I leave this heaped but because I want the furrows to show through I tapped off the excess. To seal this in place, soak the entire surface in isopropyl alcohol before applying matte sealant. Once dried this becomes rock solid. To accentuate the furrows and create the impression of seedlings beginning to sprout, carefully paint PVA onto the top of each line before sprinkling on Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Grass. Try not to be perfect with this because the occasional gaps add to the realism. No point being careful with the application of the fine turf because you can simply tap away the excess and save for future projects. Now it's time to flock the edges so that it looks more immersive on the game board. Apply PVA in patches before sprinkling different flocks. Here I used Woodland Scenics fine turf weeds followed by burnt grass. I decided that I wanted to add some bright static grass to give it a vibrant spring look so again applied PVA. I placed the base onto a metal tray and attached the alligator clip to the tray. This really helps the static charge to make the little grass fibers stand on end. Next it's time to make the fence. I used some 5mm thick balsa wood which I cut at a width of 24mm. When cutting against the grain like this I used lots of repeated cuts rather than trying to force the blade. This was then cut to make the fence posts. Each post is weathered by shaving the edges with a sharp blade. If you want to speed up the process you could skip this step, it does however add a lot of character once painted up. To make the planks I first weather some popsicle sticks with a wire brush, this helps to accentuate the wood grain texture. Then cut them in half lengthways, be very careful to avoid cutting yourself. Once there are enough planks they are weathered in the same way as the post. Again this can be a little time consuming but is totally worth it in the long run because it looks so appealing. A pair of clippers are handy for squaring off the ends of each plank. After double checking measurements it's time to glue the fence together. To attach the planks to the posts I used quick drying wood glue. The plank is pressed firmly onto the glue before attaching the second plank in the same way. This completes the longer sections of the fence. I use blue tack to fix the completed long fence sections and post in place while I attach the planks for the perpendicular fence section. Assembling the fence like this was far more fiddly than simply hot gluing the posts directly onto the base. I did it this way because I wanted to be able to paint the fence without messing up all the work already done on the base. Once the glue is dry and the fences are complete it's time to paint them. I primed them brown with my airbrush, then dry brush using Vallejo Israeli sand which has a light grey tone which works well to give the timber an old weathered look. This is followed by a very light dry brush of white to carefully pick out the texture. Before attaching the fence to the base I wanted to plant some veggies. I played around with a couple of different approaches to this before settling on simply attaching Gamer Grass's green shrubs in nice neat rows. My wife reminded me that I had real gardening to do but I took a fence and hot glued it in place. Hot glue is great when you want to attach something quickly. Just make sure you don't go overboard with it and end up with big blobs at the bottom of your posts. If this does happen don't panic, it can be hidden in the next step. 
To incorporate the fence more naturally into the base, apply PVA around the connection point as well as small amounts here and there on the fence itself before sprinkling over fine turf weeds. You can add variety by mixing it up with some small bits of clump foliage as well. Adding these little details really helps to give the whole piece a cohesive look and create the impression of a well-established vegetable patch that has fed many a hobbit belly. Next it's time to finish planting the veggies from earlier. I'm not sure what kind of vegetable they are, but they look tasty. After a hard day's work in the garden, I deserve an ice cold beer. To finish off, I decided there needed to be some flowers around the outside, because as every good hobbit knows, you need lavender for the bees and marigolds for the ladybirds. This was a fun little project that only took a couple of evenings after work to complete. Uh, I had bandied around different ideas, like um, using the old doormat uh, method to create like a wheat kind of field. I just felt like I wanted something a bit more vibrant uh, for the hobbits. I'm looking forward to starting the quest for the ring bearer campaign and sending some marauding hobbits to raid Farmer Maggot's crop. You've been in the Farmer Maggot's crop! <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you have any special tricks for how you make farm type terrain for tabletop wargaming, veggie patches and things like that and extra special details. Uh, for example, do you have a, a better method than using a butter knife for creating furrows? And if you'd like to support the channel then please hit subscribe, hit like and share with your friends. Um, another thing you can do is if you want to make something like this then to buy your hobby supplies through the affiliate links which will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it and good hobbying guys.